khutbah today, as you all know, it's the final, it's the farewell Friday sermon of the month of Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an. I figured it would be appropriate to share some realities in regards to the Book of Allah and our times. And the attitudes that Muslims and non-Muslims have towards Allah's Book and what needs to be done about it, inshaAllah ta'ala. First and foremost, I want to share with you something you already know. We live in a religiously pluralistic society. A society in which many different people follow many, many different religions. You have people of different faiths at your work, people of different faiths at your school, at your college, at your university, in your neighborhood. Pretty much everybody else, is, it's a diversified society in terms of religions. And when people live in such a society, there are certain ideas that aren't even said, but they, they creep into the thought process of the people. And this is something that creeps into the thought process of the Christian, the Jew, the Hindu, the agnost, whoever, and even sometimes the Muslim. And this idea of, you know, part of getting along with everybody, and part of sort of respecting everybody else, one of the ideas that's pumped into a pluralistic society is that all these religions, people follow these different religions because they come from different backgrounds. They come from different cultures. You're from Morocco, and you're from Spain, and you're from, you know, you're from Egypt, or you're from, you know, Bangladesh or something, that's why you're a Muslim. And, you know, I'm from the Philippines, or I'm from Sri Lanka, or wherever else, and I, that's why I'm a Buddhist, or that's why I'm a Hindu, or that's why I'm a Catholic, or that's why I'm a Protestant, etc., etc. So really, we just learn to accept religious differences almost as though these are cultural differences, right? So there's all this, this idea is presented that religious differences, there's no distinction between them is just, you could think of it like another cultural dis difference. So the fact that you fast in the month of Ramadan and your neighbors know that you fast, they think oh, it's a, such, such, such a cool thing they do in their culture. The first thing that comes in their mind isn't religion, the first thing that comes in their mind is these eastern people, these brown people, these yellow people, these colored people, they fast. It's a thing they do out there, right? That's what it is. And you know sometimes the Muslim themselves, especially the youth, start thinking like that. Yeah, we're Muslim because we were born in a Muslim family. Or we're, that's, that's our heritage, that's how we are. That's, these are the kinds of things we do because we come from that background. And the, the idea and the conviction that we are Muslim because it is the truth. It has nothing to do with where we come from, or what our parents are, the fact that the deen of Allah, Islam, is the truth. That idea becomes diluted. It gets reduced to just a culture. It gets reduced to just a religious... Heritage, that's all it is. And when you lose sight of the fact that this is the truth, then you feel, you don't feel the urgency to want to share the truth with others. You're okay with the fact that somebody else is whatever other religion, and you are this religion, it's just traditional differences. Her, you know, these are differences of heritage. But when you're convinced this is the truth, and then when you're convinced of that, then you know everybody else, what they have is falsehood, then you feel a sense of urgency to want to share the truth with others. If there's a building on fire, and you're the only one who knows it's on fire, it's only decency that you would want to let other people know, listen, we need to get out of here, it's on fire. It's a, there's a sense of urgency that creeps up into you. But the sense of urgency is gone. It's gone because we don't associate the, 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 the deen of Allah, the book of Allah, the legacy of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as being the ultimate truth that demands to be shared with humanity. That's one problem, a, a change of attitude needs to take place. Here's another change of attitude that I want to talk to you about. Those of us who do work in the field of da'wah, or organizations, groups, writers, websites, etc., etc., dedicated to spreading and you know, enlightening people with the message of Islam in whatever capacity, may Allah help all the efforts of da'wah, big and small, local and national, may Allah help all of them and put barakah in their work and accept the work from them. And may Allah make all of us contributors to the work of da'wah in all lands, including this one. Now, having said all of that, the work of da'wah, of sharing the message of Islam with the larger society, let's just talk about it in the American context briefly, this work has a few obstacles in front of it. And this work has right now been reorganized, and it's been shaped not according to our liking or according to the principles of our book and our legacy, but according to a different agenda. And this is what I wanted to bring before you. You know, in the Prophet's time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Qur'an was the main vehicle of da'wah. The Messenger ﷺ was commanded, اُتْلُوا مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ Read what has, been read to you, what, what has been revealed to you from the book. Read it on to the people. Recite it on to them. وَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٍ Remind by means of the Qur'an. Makkan Surah, right? Who are you reminding by Qur'an? 
Whoever fear, fears the promise, even if a disbeliever has some fear of the promise, they'll be reminded by the Qur'an. The Qur'an was a means by which the message of Allah was delivered to people. But it, and you know, when this message was delivered, some people didn't want to hear it. Some people wanted to distract this conversation. They didn't want to have this conversation that is the central message of the book. So they started this tactic, you can call it irrelevant questions, they started asking the Messenger وسلم, questions that are almost tangents. So that he would be so busy answering those questions, he never gets to talk about what he wants to talk about. So they would say to him, we will believe in what you have to say, but just answer this, who sends you revelation? Which angel? What's his name? If you just tell us that, we'll believe. So the ayat come down and he answers properly. He says, Jibreel, and they say, well, we don't like him actually. Let's ask you another question. How about this? Who were the people of the cave? If you just answer that, we're going to believe. So he, the Quran answers, Ashab al Kahf. Right? We recite this in Surah Al Kahf. So now, when the, that answer is given, well, no, we have another question actually. What is the ruh? Where does it come from? Who's Dhul Qarnay? Are these central questions? You have to understand, the central idea was believe in this messenger. The central concept was La ilaha illallah. The central concept was don't change with your tongue the book that Allah had revealed to you. Don't hide what Allah has sent to you. That was the message. They don't want to accept that message. So what's the easiest tactic? Change the conversation by changing the questions. It's a very clever tactic. It's very clever. And you know it's even used today. You go on a TV, if you, it's a TV interview, and the host, the guy who's hosting the show, and there's an expert, some scholar, whatever area, maybe it's a historian, maybe it's a political scientist, whatever. That historian will never get to say what he wants to say because the host keeps changing the questions. He controls the entire conversation. What I'm trying to get across is whoever controls the questions controls the conversation. This, this is true in media, this is true in da'wah, this is true in discourse in general. Whoever controls the questions controls the conversation. The thing in the Qur'an is Allah did address some of their questions, then He stopped. Then Allah started asking questions Himself. Because Allah Azza wa Himself takes control of the conversation. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Why don't you think? Right? أَمْ لَكُمْ كِتَابٌ فِيهِ تَدْرُسُونَ Do you have a book that you study from? Bring it forward. هَاتُوا بُرْحَانَكُمْ Asking questions and making demands on the people who disbelieve. But now we're living in times where we are not the ones, the Muslims are not the ones, the Da'is are not the ones asking the questions. Questions are being asked of us. Hey, how come Islam condones terrorism? How come you people hate women so much? How come you do this? How come you do that? And you're, we're put in a position where we're constantly telling people, no, 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 Islam is not this. No, Islam is not that. No, Islam is not that either. And it's not this either. And no, this is not what the Quran actually says. And this is not this and that. So we're so busy telling people what Islam is not, we never get a chance to tell them what Islam is. We never get a chance to speak. Because the questions are not in our control. We have to understand, this, the ayah I recited before you from Surah Al-Anbiya, very powerful, very, very powerful ayah. Allah Azza wa Jal in this ayah, He depicts the message of this deen and the book of Allah, and this truth, this La ilaha illallah, this Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that is running in our blood, this, this truth, Allah gives it an image. Sometimes in the Qur'an a lesson is taught by means of drawing a picture in your mind. Allah Azza wa Jal says, بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَطْرِ We spear the truth against the falsehood. The image being drawn is that truth or Islam is like a spear, it's like a weapon. This truth, truth is like a weapon. And it's being hurled, it's been launched against falsehood, who's a guy running away from a spear obviously. So who's on the offensive? The spear. And who's running away? The falsehood. Compare that to our times. Who's actually running after who? It's like the guy who's he's running after the spear. It's the other way around. We're on the run. We're not answering. We're not the one asking the questions. The tables have been turned. 